good afternoon and good evening to our audience from all around the world to this ninth edition of perspectives the leadership fireside chat webinar series where i am speaking to eminent leaders across the travel and hospitality space on their personal journeys views on the current crisis and how do the see the future unfold my name is apurv chamaria i am the chief revenue officer at reed gain and joining me is a dear friend mr debojo maharishi who is the chief marketing officer at spicejet we are delighted to host debojo for this fireside chat which has seen more than 500 registrations debojo is a successful entrepreneur who founded a company at the young age of 26 years in the area of digital consulting and offered turnkey solutions to clients operating in sectors as diverse as education e governance human capital and travel He also went on to head the marketing function for the organizing committee at the Commonwealth Games, which was a massive, massive success. Debajo has close to 19 years of experience in marketing, advertising, brand management, strategy, e-commerce, and technology. He is a multilingual person, highly energetic, and loves to think out of the box. He is currently responsible for managing the marketing, product, and training at SpiceJet. He is also responsible for the Aviation Academy. which includes a cabin crew and pilot school uh in some senses he is a pioneer amongst leading my marketers in india which are going beyond their functions and now managing multiple functions and a leadership role spicejet is one of my favorite airlines in 2019 it won the coveted icwa award for excellence in cost management and i am sure this year that expertise is going to help them a lot Uh, in 2018 it was awarded the best domestic airline at wings india uh, spicejet has been doing a phenomenal work during covid it's operated more than 25 flights under the vande bharat mission and helped bring back more than 4500 indians stranded in uae saudi arabia and oman it's also operated more than 200 charter flights helping repatriate close to 30000 indian nationals it's phenomenal it's pivoted and it's doing a lot of interesting work on cargo which is helping india stay connected and essential goods uh made available across india so debojo firstly a very very warm welcome to you on behalf of reed gain and the larger travel and hospitality community thank you so much for taking out time and being on the fireside chat thank you apurv and thank you for the you know wonderful introduction delighted to be part of this wonderful conversation with you so uh, let's get the fireside chat started now so you are no stranger to rebuilding trust from the ground up in the face of crisis at spicejet i know before we went live we were talking about the whole entrepreneurial dna of spicejet and constantly you are at the forefront of innovation never giving up finding a way in what is by any means a very very tough sector to operate in so from force from grounding of flights you were actually the world's top airline stock uh, 2 years ago what role does marketing play in a airline like this and what learnings can you share for many aspiring marketers who are on the call well, you know we have been uh, you know i personally feel that i have been fortunate enough to be a part of this journey spicejet unfortunately was you know almost shut for a day in 2000 in december 2016 you know but the uh, 16 december 2015 and that's when ajay singh immediately infused some cash and took over the airline and let me tell you he did this without you know without even going through the proper due diligence process the due diligence process the process was happening the airline collapsed so if an airline you know collapses it's very difficult to you know re to you know, revive it from that from that position so you know he took he took over he took over immediately infused some cash which was required 16th december i remember he took over we were there part of the team in jan so jan onwards you know one of the one of the biggest challenges for us was you know regaining the customer confidence it was december peak holiday period and we had ruined you know holidays of thousands of people lessers took our fleet you know or we had we or a significant portion of our fleet was not there so what it meant was many such flights were cancelled there were other challenges also you know we uh, the government forced us to stop our future bookings our future bookings were not there which meant further you know further impact on our cash flow 
at that point of time, you know, for the first three, four months, our only aim was to survive and to see how we can, you know, how we can look beyond that phase. There were, uh, I remember, you know, the first, uh, our uh, commercial team did extremely well at that point of time from, you know, from March onwards, from, I remember from April, April 2016, we were the airline with highest load in the country. Our occupancy factor stood at 88, 88.5, 88.8% at that point of time. In May 2015, it was 90% plus. And from there on, for record, we have never gone beyond 90% till February 2000, till pre-COVID days. So, and it, and it still is a world record in the history of aviation. Similarly, you know, our engineering teams, our ops team, they did extremely well. Our, our online, uh, our, uh, occupancy, our occupancy factor was great, but our, you know, on-time performance also stood from where we are, where we were, we were last, we were probably, you know, the fifth airline in terms of chart, but in five months, we became the best airline in terms of on-time performance also. And on-time performance was something where our, you know, our, where our competitor had a significant, you know, positioning for the longest period of time. So replacing them was 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 a big was a big achievement for us. And kudos to the engineering and the operations team. They worked hard. The flight ops team, everybody, everybody for that matter, worked hard, hard, you know. And then and after the first few months, of course, as I said, was all about survival. I must admit the entire leadership team, you know, under the able guidance of Ajay Singh, did well to pass that phase. From marketing perspective, you know, we started utilizing our digital tools from there on. The strategy was, you know, uh, the strategy was to reach the audience that we intended to with the right messaging around the brand being back and without spending much. We went ahead with conventional CPC models, which ensured us billions of impressions without, you know, without spending much. Our budgets were small at that point of time. We did hard negotiations. We had to make some compromise, but we made sure that we kept changing the creatives frequently so that impressions were served. And, and, you know, for just a minimal cost, we could achieve billions of impression and that helped us, you know, we we're at least, you know, we we're at least seen across, you know, across the board, be it, you know, on desktop, on your, on your, on your mobile, those impressions were served. We did use a little bit of dynamic search ads. We did use, you know, retargeting in both display and search. After about four to five months, we took a chance and started releasing big format jacket ads. That was a big gamble. You know, the, you know, print costs much. There was a huge investment that went on. On we did, you know, your uh, jackets in Times of India, in Hindustan Times, in Hindu, in almost in every nooks and parts of the country. And that gave, con you know, consumers and customers a lot of, not only consumers and our customers, but our partners, our channel partners, our, you know, our distributors. That gave a lot of confidence to those guys also that look, you know, it seems that they are back. So with that, you know, we communicate and, and there was something to communicate about. Our team gave us a lot to communicate about. We communicated about, you know, our on-time performance. We communicated being India's favorite airline with highest occupancy. And of course, you know, the new commercial, the, whatever the commercial teams wanted, the new routes, the sales, they were communicated well. So that is how, you know, I think from, from March onwards, we started working on those campaigns after three to four months. And then we moved on to print and then slowly, you know, we started we started, you know, uh, acting on almost each and every channel that was possible. Oh, it's amazing. I remember those full page ads, jacket ads, which you spoke about. It was such a bold statement that time. And it just showed that this airline is so vibrant. It's here to stay. It's doing well. And I think it led to a lot of people trying SpiceJet for the first time that time and really, really positioned you as a market leader. So. You've been a seasoned marketer, you know, from doing Commonwealth Games, which was marketing at a different level and in almost one way positioning the nation as a nation which can really do world-class events uh, to actually running SpiceJet. How have you seen marketing evolve and what do you think are the top three trends uh, or uh, new initiatives which marketers should be aware of and experiment with? About, you know, I believe the essentials, you know, I've been saying this, the essentials of marketing has always remained same what it used to be. You've got to know your customer well. You have to target your audience well. You have to understand your prospects and your measurements must be in place. You know, we have been speaking about measurements a lot these days, but these measurements were always there, even for, even for print people used to measure how their print ads were doing. 
and of course your creative team and your creative creative strategy will bring a lot of you know a lot of value to you what has changed right now is how you communicate or probably how you disseminate your communication and how you measure it that has changed a lot and i believe you know uh, three things you have asked i would say one your data and audience management and will create significant competitive advantage for everybody be it, you know be it, anybody any of any of any of these organization which invest heavily on their communications you know data and audience management will create significant advantage for for them personalization and hyper personalization with the right you know ux you know ux is a term which is very commonly used but i believe with personalization and hyper personalization you got to have the right ux strategy and be it in your own assets be it in your own campaigns campaign tools be it how you disseminate in in both these things your own assets and what you communicate it's extremely important how you personalize and hyper personalize your communication uh beyond that you know uh, of course at, at this point of time consumers are receptive to you know some marketing at this point of time be it you know but you have budgets you don't have budgets but you know you'll have to keep engaging with your consumers at this point of time and that will be one single you know one of the largest differentiator how you how you react and how agile you are to the new normal the new normal is changing very fast and so you have to marketers will have to you know react quickly and adapt to the new normal which is changing almost every month i see every month there's a new trend so you have to react to that and you have to you know manage that new normal you know absolutely quickly uh and this also means at if you if you go at a micro level you it also means that you'll have to keep reviewing your digital strategies how do you bid you'll have to change your bid bidding strategies frequently if you have to you know optimize your budgets uh i believe that you know most of most of us also have a huge ready audience and it is absolutely essential that you optimize the use of that audience for example you know i would say today probably uh, 4 4% of indian are flying not today i am talking about pre covid levels if you look at that numbers we own approximately 20 million you know people we own as our audience so that's a significantly large number and i actually don't have to go beyond that if i keep communicating to that audience with you know with some basic you know investment on my campaign tools that will also significantly you know uh, i'll be able to shape up my perception i'll be able to you know communicate the new normal to them and for us a challenge has been communicating the new normal to the consumers that those numbers are you know those numbers are small at this point of time we are not you know we are not flying with our full fleet but you know still you know communicating the new normal how you are how you are flying how what are the things that you have to do the entire entire journey that needs to be communicated you know communicated well so i believe what you own already you need to you need to you know optimize that asset and you need to you know keep communicating because that that's almost you know without any cost it doesn't doesn't cost much to communicate to your own audience and most of us we own a significant chunk of that yeah so almost 50% of audience that's a massive thing correct yeah so spicejet was the first airline to launch a cargo flight in india uh, and a truly a proud moment to see private players putting you know all entrepreneurial efforts to save the business and trying to minimize the covid impact you also ran many other initiatives to engage the travelers during the crisis so would love to get your insights on when did you first realize that a big covid crisis is unfolding and what were some of the early thoughts which came into your mind and uh, what was your response as a marketer to the crisis you know your this uh, cargo business was the, the entire you know conceptualization of this business you know happened much much before you know it, it didn't it couldn't have happened in in a month or or two months period we had uh, we have a dedicated fleet of you know freighters the boeing 737 freighters and of course you know our team our engineering team our the the ops team the business team they reacted very quickly to the situation today spiceship is india's number one cargo air cargo service provider we have a mixed fleet we have a mixed fleet of operators which means that you know we have of course we started with the boeing 737 700 and 800 with freighters which could which could which had a payload of around close to 20 tons and now we have the smaller q400 aircraft which have a payload of around 7 ton so what it does is that you know it has helped us in creating a hub and spoke model for our cargo business uh, you will see that a lot of smaller cities they have a huge demand for cargo let's say you know uh, you know cities of northeast they have a lot of demand you know uh, uh, people do interact with me but that you know i have i have pineapples in in tripura i have 
fruits, I have oranges in Arunachal Pradesh, but I don't have that kind of volume. I don't have 20 tons to give you. Two, three of us can give you probably seven tons. And that is where these, you know, we are calling them little jumbos. So where, you know, so that is where these aircraft are coming very high. So we are trying to create a hub and spoke model. This is just aircraft into, 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 uh, into freighters, the Q400 into freighters. We'll be, we'll be doing more. We see a huge potential and huge demand for this. And we are in the process of, you know, uh, converting them into freighters. In, since lockdown itself, we have, you know, if I'm not mistaken, our cargo team has uh, added close to 30 international destinations. And uh, these are, you know, these are starting from East Europe to Africa to, you know, East Asia to your, your Far East in Far East China. So, you know, they have, they have created a significant network for our cargo operations, which will, which will be immensely beneficial in the days to come. Uh, we call this arm as Spice Express. This is the dedicated arm of Spice Jets, you know, Spice Jets cargo business. And since day one, I'll tell you, you know, we there was a demand to carry one PP suit. So the teams just carried one PP suit from Delhi to Coimbatore. So that you know, there's just one suit of 500 grams of less than 500 grams which went in that aircraft from Delhi to Coimbatore, so that production of those suits could start. And today, let me tell you, that's the hub. Coimbatore and South of India is hub. India is self-reliant in terms of PP, in, in terms of PP, you know, production. We, uh, you know, your uh, lot of a lot of these PP kits were earlier uh, imported from uh, from from eastern from eastern countries, but now it has completely stopped. India is far more than self-reliant in this business. And uh, I remember. You know, and and it's you know we try and we try and do our bit in terms of whatever we can. I remember in mid May we had we had a request, we had a call from uh, one of our NGO partners to deliver life saving cancer drugs across the country, not only in one destination but in multiple locations. So our teams reacted quickly, and they not only delivered it to the airports, they made sure that because we have a door to door arm, our cargo business, you know, one there are two set of business, one is air to air, the other one is door to door. So they ensured that those life-saving drugs reached to the to the to the to the to the door where it was required. So in multiple locations across the country, those drugs were delivered without any charges. It was absolutely you know free of cost, which a service which we offered. And uh, during this time, the other the other important fact is that what we ensured is that in our small way, what we ensured that the the, the supplies could be the, the the supply channel, the supply chain should remain intact. The supply chain. Uh, in terms of farmers, farmers could you know farmers could send their supplies to from one city to other, from from India to abroad, and of course, lot of lot of medical equipments, lot of medical equipments were imported from other parts of the country to India, various cities of India, and then transferred from you know one place to other through these freighters. So these freighters have not only helped us you know your your sail through this this uh, period, they've also helped in in their own bit you know uh, by uh, keeping the supply channel in. Maintaining the supply chain of essential medical consumers and wherever we could do our bit. We're, we're losing you, Debo. You'll need to get a little closer to the microphone and louder. Yeah. So, Debo, this is fantastic. Uh, I wanted to get your perspective on so every country uh, and every company discovered the extent of this crisis at a different time because we are in the travel and hospitality business and we have a global footprint. Uh, almost end Feb, we started seeing the impact because bookings were crashing in China, hotels were closing down. So when did SpiceJet understand how big is this crisis going to be? And what are the steps you took from a communications and marketing perspective uh, to ensure business continuity and passenger confidence. You know, it was. Uh, I think uh, from fifteenth March onwards. Of course, the, the crisis was perceived, but from fifteenth March onwards, I think we felt that you know oh, oh, this is unavoidable. So the country was moving towards a lockdown. The cases were increasing. So, you know, so from, I think from 15th March onwards, we felt that, you know, this is inevitable and we'll have to go through it. 
the biggest challenge at that point of time in terms of communicating was how you communicate you know what are the next say for a lot of lot of lot of people in fact had their bookings lot of lot of people had their you know plans so how do you communicate to them that what is the next so you know so we had various plans for various sort of bookings so that was so so that so that was you know probably that's what kept you know us busy for most of the time during the first phase of lockdown that how do you communicate to these people that how effectively that how to how to rebook how to use their credit how how can they how can they you know successfully use it so that's what i think and and we had to engage and and there was a and there was a call overflow so we had so we had to you know we have uh, we quickly came up with a bot we named her pepper so you know so so that bot was mostly utilized for covid related information so 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 i think mostly it was you know managing managing that crisis that's what kept us busy during that phase so there you know uh, a lot of airlines have had to rethink about routes and operations so how have the operational routes where spicejet is flying changed from pre covid times to now uh, you know maybe you've done something about your network strategy uh, on bharat which is tier 2 and tier 3 as more and more uh, people try from uh, try to travel there or from there versus india which is tier 1 which still continues to be uh, unabated covid hotspot so have you changed moved your flights around and you know of course you know it was it was not only up to us because you know there were there were a lot of restrictions there were a lot of restrictions imposed by a lot of these state governments because of you know because of a lot of a lot of rules in in fact the first the first uh, one week was completely chaos you know there was a plan which was again changed which was again revisited then again a new plan was drafted because somebody because the government announced a certain policy you know uh, the ministry of civil aviation has been extremely vocal about air travel you know in fact they have been uh, they have been through us these entire two months they came up with a plan that you know you have what kind of fee what kind of percentage of of aircraft or what kind of you know your routes you will be allowed to you will be allowed to fly but beyond that state governments had also imposed additional you know restrictions so that made it really difficult of course the plan was you know there are a lot of people stuck in tier one cities a lot of people who were walking so they all of them they wanted to go back so of course you know it was but obvious that the movement was from tier 1 to you know your bharat to tier 2 to tier 3 cities and but and then you know uh, we didn't see much movement from tier 2 to tier 3 cities but you know this this is this is you know ever increasing this is increasing as we are speaking every day we see a better trend and this people are people are coming out people are flying but uh, i believe the you know the single most challenge out here is the quarantine in rules that we today have in most of the states what we have is if you have to if you have to let's say uh, if you have to now travel to bombay to if you have to travel to mumbai and if you have a return ticket let's say which is within 7 days then you are allowed to go there you will not be under quarantine and you can come back so people who want to travel to mumbai from places where there is no restriction let's say delhi is one of them west bengal is one of them bihar is one of those states you can always go there and come back but think of a businessman think of a think of a person who wants to travel from maharashtra to any other part of the country even if it is even if the number of cases or the prevalence of covid 19 is less in those cities they can't because the moment you move out of mumbai let's say if you if i am a resident of mumbai i can't for all practical purpose i can't move out even for a day even for a day if i go out and come back i'll have to i'll have to be in quarantine because i don't have a, if i don't have further plans so you know states will have to understand you know and, and i think we'll proactively take this up with the states in the coming days that you know one if you are giving some exemption for people to come in, for coming inside your state be it three days 72 hours be it one week be it couple of weeks so you need to give an equal amount of exemption for people who want to travel from your state to other parts of the cities otherwise you know people of that state state they'll completely remain you know locked down they completely people who are there people business man who are there travelers who want to travel traders who want to travel you know there are families who want to be who want to reunite there are people who want to pay a visit to their parents so they will completely remain locked so we have to you know and i think we'll you know in the in the next coming days we will speak with the state governments and try and see if this if this can be relaxed a bit yeah it's a very very tough environment to be in because you could be trying on flying to a place which has no quarantine or nothing by the time you land maybe the rules are changed yes 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 see for example you know karnataka has changed this all of a sudden 
Now, let's say states like Orissa. Now, they have their policies that whether you are coming into Orissa or traveling out of Orissa, if it is a matter of 72 hours, no quarantine. So that's what we are, all that we are asking for is that it should be uniform. It should be for both sides. If you, if you go to, if you go to, if you go to Orissa, if you stay there for less than three days, you come back, there is no quarantine for you. Similarly, a citizen of that state, if he or she wants to, you know, uh, travel to travel outside Odisha and come back within three days, then there is no quarantine for them. Be it home, be it, you know, institutional quarantine. So that's what should, and it should remain uniform for you know, everybody. So, uh, Dibujo, airlines is one of the few sectors where pricing is very specialized. Like in a normal FMCG company, uh, right. it would work very closely with finance. Maybe in airlines also, you guys do it. Uh, in a lot of our interactions, which we are having with revenue managers uh, and commercial heads and airlines, all of them are saying we need to reconfigure the way pricing is being done. One of the most critical components was reliance on historical data when deciding on a new route, new airport, or even thinking about pricing plans. Uh, do you think this presents an opportunity for airlines to look at new demand indicators? It could be weather, it could be zip codes. Uh, and opening up this whole thing about ancillary pricing, pricing Wi-Fi separately, entertainment separately, any thoughts then? See, I'll answer your first uh, question, you know, your, uh, I'll, take, I'll take that first. You know, India essentially is a very price sensitive market. And, you know, and I think our commercial teams have done exceptionally well, well under the given circumstances in the last four or five years and, and stay ahead of the curve. I think we are, we are way ahead in terms of our competitors, be it, be it you know, uh, be it your, uh, the occupancy numbers, the load factor, and be it your, uh, the overall revenue, what we call as RASC in our terms. So, uh, so, but you know, uh, being a very price sensitive number, you know, your, your country and how this market operates, I don't think, you know, essentially that's going to change by a large, you know, your, uh, your people, uh, teams will still look at, you know, historical data while they, while they want to look at new, uh, new markets, while they, while they decide on new routes, I think they'll still, I think they'll still go back and check those historical numbers. But having said that, there is an opportunity at this point of time where the brand value will take some more significance, you know, in terms of what you, you know, uh, what kind of services you provide what kind of safety measures you have taken how much you know how much prevalence is of the of the, of the safety factors that you have inducted in in, in the organization or, or in your or in your aircraft so those things might hold some prevalence because you know, your, your studies your data your a lot of these surveys have suggested that people do want to pay some well, still the significant number is still saying that no they don't want to pay more but there's a significant number say around 50 60 percent of them are saying that but still there's a significant number, 15, 20%, which is saying that, yes, I'm ready to pay 10%, 20%, 30%. Of course, some of them would be you know, even willing to pay 100% more. So, so we do see that there could be that, there could be that you know, shift. Apu, if you can come back on your second, uh, second bit. Apu, you are on mute, I guess, yeah. Do you think uh, my second bit was, you know, globally airlines talk about uh, being a digital airlines where one day ancillary might even be equal or higher than seat revenue and pricing, you know, Wi-Fi, entertainment, shopping, everything separately. And India is doing a little bit of ancillary pricing, but mostly related to seats with extra leg space, we at times pay more or stuff like that. But do you see with this whole COVID crisis, ancillary becoming a very big important trend in Indian aviation? See, ancillary, you know, for low cost, low cost, you know, airlines are based on principles of unbundling. And, you know, you try and sell everything separately, customize the, your offerings for your audience. You may want something based on, based on, and, and what we're try, trying to do, when I told you about that at personalization and hyper-personalization uh, uh, bit. So what we're trying to do here is that we're trying to offer what makes sense for you. So for example, for a family of three, traveling together, the requirements might be a little bit different from a, a single person who is traveling alone on a business trip. So, you know, so we are trying to personalize that. And, uh, and you know, uh, your ancillary revenue, of course, you know, I don't think that ancillary revenue will ever be you know, equal to your, your passenger revenue. But, you know, the, the most important uh, thing is that what the impact on bottom lines are, uh, are, are very well, are, are, you know, are, are very significant. 
So uh, the way ancillary revenue impacts your bottom line is, is considerable. And that needs to be that needs to be managed well. Of course, a lot of ancillary has been impacted at, at this point of time. Let's say, you know, uh, all the airlines where uh, the LCCs is typically LCCs under the normal product used to allow 15 kgs of extra excess baggage. But at this at this point of time, because of you know because of certain changes that we have made in how you travel, that has been increased to 20 kgs. So there's a significant hit on excess baggage. Similarly, seat revenue have uh, has gone up. But you know, so at the same time, there are a lot of new products which are coming up, and I think this will help us in in, in the coming days. You know, there are some exciting your announcements also. So I think it will it will have considerable impact on our revenue, on the, and at least on the bottom lines. Fair enough. I think that's a very interesting perspective. So Debo, you know, uh, we spoke quickly before the call even started that SpiceJet is known for its continuous innovation, coming up with products that really offer customer expectations and yet offer value for money. In the post-COVID area, where the customer and traveler expectations and mindsets will change, how are you guys thinking about attracting guests, winning their trust and generating revenue? What are some of the new initiatives which your teams are internally talking about and whatever can be shared publicly? You know, at this point of time, uh, of course, there are, uh, you know, some, of the, some of the things that we try to make the, uh, make the entire experience much safer. So for example, we are trying to equip all our seats with synthetic leather seats. The synthet you know, what happens is that any kind of dust or microbes or virus, they get attached to Debujo, can you hear us? We can't hear you. Um, yeah. yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah, I think we all went on mute for some time. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Yeah, I'm saying, you know, what we have done is that we have tried equipping all our seats with synthetic leather. With synthetic leather. With synthetic leather, what happens is that the amount of microbes, dust, it's not porous basically. You know, any other any other surface, be it you know your your fabric or something, they're more they're more uh, you know they're more prone to the virus or any other microbe being attached to that seat. So what we have done is that we have tried and we are we are trying and equipping. I think we at this point of time we have equipped all our aircraft with synthetic leather seats. So you know the cleaning becomes much much easier. We are trying to, you know, uh, we had launched, we had just, we just did a beta launch of our in-flight entertainment because at this Okay, to our... You're on mute, Debo. No, it's getting me on mute. On its yeah, now you now it's fine. Now it's fine. Yeah, that's a fantastic initiative, and I'm sure a lot of people uh, would love to fly SpiceJet. That's very reassuring that the synthetic leather seats are easy to clean. And uh, are there any other things uh, which you're fundamentally changing, which make a SpiceJet a more safer carrier to fly versus others? You know, Apoor, it, it's 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 a, it's a completely it's a completely new you know new journey, right? You know, at this point of time. You now, one thing I would like to share, which has been there also earlier, but you know, there's a mis there's a huge mis mis miscommunication around the cabin air. People feel that cabin air is stale. The person who is on the first row is circulating the same. You know, he's breathing the same air. What probably you know somebody on on fifth, sixth, or probably the thirtieth row is. It's a completely, it's a complete myth. The fact is that it's one of the most cleanest form of air that could be provided in any form of transportation. There are, you know, and the, the airflow, what the airflow is from top, from your ceiling to bottom. And it's a gush which happens. So the airflow does not, even if you are sitting on the first row and somebody is sitting on the second row, you don't breathe the same air. 
the air the air the air quality the air drop happens from top to bottom in bottom you have hepa filters these hepa filters are same which are which are which are there in you know you know world class hospital hospitals where 99.9% plus of the microbes get filtered out and then and then you know and then the the entire air refreshes almost every 2 to 3 minutes in an hour the entire air circulation happens 20 to 30 minutes so that's almost like every 2 to 3 minutes there's a new you know there's a new breath of air which is you know you're circulated inside the cabin air the entire travel your entire journey is now almost contactless you know uh, starting from starting from the moment you get inside the airport the airport the airport our airport partners have also brought in significant changes in the way you know change the infrastructure which was prevalent uh your uh, while you get inside the airport there's our you know aragya setu is 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 mandated and it's a beautiful app you know you you come to you come to know the status of the status of the passenger whether he has come in close proximity of a covid patient or not If, you know there are various there are various colors that the color codes which are attached yellow orange and red and then and anything beyond green you are not allowed to travel uh post you know after that you know the check in the check in the check in has completely changed the check in your web check in is mandatory it's you know we are still not witnessing 100% but it's close to that we are witnessing 95% from most of the cities and 95% plus as web check ins and in some cities we we see a trend of 88 90 90% but you know but the average is still much more than 90% and it's all happening through your own device it's not even kiosk we have we have this this allowed you know, kiosk also because you know we didn't want the surface we didn't uh, want any surface contamination then how you you know step into provide your luggage all that has changed how you you know how you how you board or inside the aircraft you know there are significant changes we have we have, we have pp kits are being given to passengers there's a there's a full pp kit which is given to the passenger on the middle seat so he or she acts as a shield so that you know passengers are not in contact there Uh, you know uh, the passenger who is sitting on the aisle the, the passenger who is sitting on the window seats they are not in contact with each other at this point of time we have even you know stopped our fnb services so that you know there is absolutely no contamination so from an, you know uh, from a transport perspective i feel that you know your uh, if your traveling by air is the safest mode one can think of at at this point of time actually i i learned this amazing thing that the air changes every almost 30 times in an hour and i must tell my parents Uh, I think a lot of people had this misconception, but yeah, a lot of people have this misconception. You know, I hear that because you know, how can you how can you think of because if somebody sneezes by chance, then the entire aircraft gets contaminated. It's not like that. You know, they are. It almost seems you know, safer than homes. You know, yes, if, homes. If you consider that there are there are significant number of people, then it's much more then much more cleaner because you know uh, our manufacturers they claim you know the filtration and process filters out ninety nine point nine plus percentage. it's not even 99 it's 99.9 plus percentage of microbes which get filtered out in this process so it's an absolutely clean environment much cleaner than hospital hospital also equipped the similar you know they have the similar infrastructure but the rate of infection is much more in that environment thank you devo so devo a lot of people pandits so called pandits are talking about revenge travel they are saying there is a lot of pent up demand and the moment all airports everything opens the demand is just going to take off because people are dying to get out what's your view on it are you seeing uh... see we we thought of that pent up surge and in fact you know what you are saying is absolutely correct because if you look at data and and it was quite strange to see when we when we saw data on our own channels when we gathered data through our you know our our partners and we and when we you know we work with google very closely and when we worked on you know your your google data also it showed us that the single most important destination for which people were searching was goa people were not searching for any other pair of you know routes the the, the even you know your first was goa was on top for quite some time before the you know during the last phase of lockdown i'm not sure because i've not seen the latest trends but uh, goa was there for first couple of weeks and then was like you know your tier 1 to your tier 1 to tier 2 cities because of obvious reasons but i believe you know there are uh, as i said there are a lot of other restrictions which we have today your restrictions of quarantine restrictions of your hotel not being opened up you know goa has opened up but then again has restrictions like you need to do a covid test you know uh, 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 as fresh as 48 hours you know but where do you get this covid test the uh, covid test done getting a covid test done is you know your your yeah. next to possible at this point of time 
So only people who have you know immensely good network. Either if you're not in a hospital, then then you will be. And and, and how will somebody get you know uh, tested for COVID if he wants to travel to Goa? So that really seems to be a challenge. But we see a lot of these destinations are opening up, and I'm sure that you know people would like to move up. We are reading here and there that a lot of people are taking their cars and and moving up. And I'm sure there must be some you know pent up surge in travel and 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 leisure travel also. But to leisure travel to pick up, I think there is some time. Debo, you know, let me ask you the elephant in the room room question. How long do you think before airlines in India would go back to uh, their pre-COVID uh, fleet utilization levels? Is it? Oh, it's, it, it's it. It's very difficult. You know, the government has been extremely extremely supportive. They've told us that we could go to forty five percent level very soon. But you know, from our side, we need we need some demand to you know to to get to that level. And I don't see, and that's you know directly related to the COVID scenario in the country. So until and unless that becomes a new normal, or that, or there is a plateau, or probably there's a sharp, not even a plateau in in the uh, in the graph. But I see until unless you know, I feel that unless there's a significant drop, I don't see that happening, or the vaccine. So if if we see that if there's a vaccine in probably you know your your by October is the best possible scenario then we might see that you know uh, your this may but we we believe that you know that post post probably you know your october we might see some significant rise sure devo you know in one of our past webinars the chief commercial officer of pegasus which is a european airline spoke about the opportunity that airlines brand sites have to increase direct bookings by just improved communication and transparency in handling communication cancellation policies and stuff like that do you think uh, airlines should invest in their own brand site and continue trying to get more bookings or do you think you know going through gds and wholesalers uh, and travel agents is more effective post covid you know uh, could, uh, this has been uh, there's a, there's a significant can shift if then what has happened significantly if you see the increase in numbers there has been an increase in number more and more people are coming to coming to our website our you know our pwa our mobile app and and converting there but as of now in in the indian you know aviation sector these assets serve more as you know servicing and for ancillary at this point of time because you know our otas in terms of you know their overall objectives you know otas overall objectives and our objectives differ we cannot you know we cannot discount our tickets and sell them we cannot you know we cannot come up with you know your crazy discounts and 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 otas for that matter you know they have been uh, they have been you know their uh, their overall uh, their overall structure their overall pricing structure have helped them to gather more you know your conversions on their own sites than ours but you know what you see in west it's completely different it's just opposite you know in in western countries you'll find that in us in european markets you'll find that 75 80% of conversions happening on their own websites in fact some of the uh, in some of the countries have gone ahead and said that you know we'll only distribute through our own channels we'll stop we will stop you know all of the forms of distribution but in indian market it seems you know uh, it, it doesn't seem a reality very soon but at the same time what we are doing is that we are trying to understand our customers much better through these through our, through our own assets more and more customers are you know coming there post booking and converting for various other reasons on our websites be it for ancillary be it for you know other services other add on services that they want to include in their bookings and of course you know it goes without saying that you will have to invest on your on your you know own channels on your own assets and make them and make them as agile and uh, and you know uh, and it should be free from any sort of complexities that's one of the single largest you know reason why people drop off yeah fascinating debo you know one of the things which happens usually during crisis is people always think that marketing is the first place where budgets are cut and all they for say free spends and it's a very defensive way of looking at life because we also say that you know when you see a crisis this is the time to gain market share and covid is a particular kind of crisis so because ultimately uh capacity is a constraint and you know there are a bunch of restrictions you work with so as the cmo you know what is your view on it 
So is this the time to run brand building campaigns, which reassure buyers and travelers that Spicejet is the safest option, so that when recovery happens, you get the larger lion's share of demand? Or is this the time to lie low and just you know protect your revenues and reduce your spend? So, of course, you know it's a it's a, it's a, it's a it's a it's a little tricky situation. If you go if I if I go back, what happened to us, you know, before five years, as I was telling you, you know, 16th December 2015, the first three months, the first four months, we were lying low. The first three four months were all about survival. You know, we couldn't think of anything else other than survival. We were doing tidbits, but we couldn't think of you know massive campaigns. But once we you know once we thought that yes, we can take the next step, we went ahead and we took that risk and we did. So that's what I think our strategy will be here also at this point of time. You know, we will. Uh, it's it, and it's not. And, and and one thing is for sure, it's not the time to lie low. You have to engage with your consumers. And as I told you, that we have a significant consumer base with which we can any which ways interact through you know through various modes, through various communication tools. Social media is also one of them. So there is so absolutely there is no lying low, and we and we have been and we have been very uh, you know. Uh, we have been aggressive in engaging with our consumers, be it on social, be it on our own, that you know, 20 million that I'm speaking, that I'm telling you, we need to, you know, communicate them, we need to understand them, them better. We need to, we need to be, you know, we need to uh, be more empathetic towards them and uh, and understand their issues and probably react to them. So we have been so we have been doing that, but again, in terms of we have been negotiating hard with our partners to see that you know how we can optimize our media campaigns or our media budgets and you know, in the best possible way. And I think, you know, with little time, we'll be a little bit more aggressive. Devo, uh, you know, I read somewhere that government has now regulated prices for OND pairs, uh, just so that no airlines uh, does a surge pricing. So is that still valid or? It's, it's, it's still valid. There is a, there's a minima and maxima. And I think it's within, I think it's, you know, it, it has always been like that. When you see, you know, a lot of people have complained to me that, you know, uh, you know, your ticket from, from let's say, uh, uh, from Delhi to Bombay was priced at fifteen thousand rupees. I said, you know, it, because you booked, you know, D minus twenty, you know, twenty hours or probably fifteen hours, and 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 just because of this booking, there are others who are paying, you know, three thousand rupees or two thousand five hundred rupees between Delhi to Bombay, and and today, you know, the prices are such that it's the most affordable means of communication. You, you 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 might as well you know travel by car bus train i think there is there is no other means is which is more cheaper during during covid times during covid times i remember people were paying up to you know per, you know in excess of 8000 rupees from delhi to guwahati people were paying 10 10 12000 12, and rupees per seat in a bus from delhi to chennai now please understand beyond that there are a lot of other expenses that you have to incur and how unsafe it is so you know, I think from pricing perspective, in the, it's it's one of the most competitive market, and 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 it's it's one of the cheapest mode of travel today. You have, thanks to this, you know, thanks thanks to the entire breed of you know NCC carriers, which brought this change in the country. So Debo, you know, we keep reading about Indian government trying to create bubbles, air bubbles, as they're calling it, between countries. Do you think a similar situation might uh, unravel between states? where you know two states might end up creating an air bubble uh, allowing for you know safe passage and unfiltered access you know i don't think between states that's going to happen uh, i'm sure you know between states you know i don't want to see that situation that within a country it should happen you know for, for we have a federal structure but still you know i don't think that should happen it's 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 one it's one country and you know your free travel should be allowed from one part of the country to the other that's an absolute essential right that you have. And I don't want any one of us to lose that right. Completely agree. So Devo, right now, unfortunately, because of the state of the business, a lot of airlines are also folding up. And uh, there could be an opportunity to buy distressed assets and really, really scale up your international operations. And uh, uh, is SpiceJet also looking at international expansion as you come out of the crisis in the next two years? Three years? You know, of course, we are looking at we are looking at international expansion. As I told you, you know, our cargo business has done extremely well, added 30 more destinations. And as the cargo business keeps on adding new destination and keeps on adding new dots on the map, we also feel that there could be huge, you know, potential in, in some of these destinations. And as you said, you know, a lot of lot of you know carriers have moved away. A lot of flights between you know port between port pairs are not there. 
so so uh, the teams the commercial teams are looking at those you know your, those places closely and i think we have we may have some announcements in very soon i'm i'm excited about that and looking forward to traveling you guys more internationally uh, so debor you know now we have like 12 minutes to go so i'm going to ask you some personal questions so that people get to see a personal side for you so given a chance to play an opportunity to play a sport would it be cricket football hockey or tennis see i played table tennis all my life you know i was i used to play you know uh, i was a national player in table tennis so out of these sports what you're saying i would love to play cricket i played that a bit so cricket but table tennis is amazing i used to play it in school so maybe we'll have a match for fun to get so your favorite uh, holiday destination in india you know at uh, at one point of time it was uh, hills in manali or probably beyond shrinagar but now probably you know i would say say the beaches state because you know easy accessibility goa or you know have lock these are some of the places i would you know love deep thing which is one airline other than spicejet around the world which you think does a good job and given a chance you would fly you know in terms of product and everything one airline which you know we work closely with and i'm very impressed with their uh, entire product set and how they fly and how they manage everything is jet blue you know the the dna seems to be very similar they have done extremely well with you know your your uh, your uh, their entire product their en- entire you know network and uh, and in terms of overall you know health of the airline and overall how they have changed changed you know flying in your the specially leisure flying in us you know i would recommend i would certainly recommend it makes sense devo which is the interesting book which you have read any time in your life or even recently which you thought was amazing and which left a mark on you so what i'm reading currently is with four prime ministers this is uh, the story of you know one of my senior colleagues in in commonwealth games he was the ceo of the games he and he served four prime ministers as you know from, uh, right from you know uh, mr devagoda to you know to vajpayee ji so so you know very interesting you know uh, very interesting you get to know you know how things happen inside prime minister's office which otherwise you know remain guided by you know your thick chinese walls so it's an excellent book you know to understand you know how how files get unfolded inside prime minister's office i would you know commonwealth games must have been it was a mammoth your team must have been very big and coordinating and you know usually when you are running an institution like spice jet over years you build your team why in cwg kind of a thing you get the team together quickly it's a time bound exercise and then everybody moves out so would love to you know hear your thoughts about uh, when you are doing something when the team is coming together for a short period of time how do you energize the a sense of common purpose and really really get them to deliver because they know it's time bound and they will go their own ways correct you know uh, beyond marketing if you look at if you look at really look at the core you know sports management you know uh, people who manage the uh, manage sporting events commonwealth games of course was you know larger than life was a sporting extravaganza that in that india hosted and organized and and the teams were there for most of the teams were there for a couple of years or more you know i was there for a short stint again as you said you know you know come do your bit and then move away i remember you know it was just uh, before 6 months when we had started you know but before that of course the team was there they were doing their bits but uh, and today also we are uh, we are associated with sports you know we are associated with boxing federation of india you know uh, our chairman is the president of boxing federation of india i also play my role all in that you know uh, so so these when we host we we hosted two major championship in india we did the uh, you know women's world championship we did the youth women's world championship one in guwahati one in delhi so these teams you know i would say that you know wherever we have to otherwise you know boxing federation of india the team is a small team of 10 people but when such team happens people from various part of the globe they join us and they join us for a short short period and these are set of people who keep on moving when you know india hosted your your uh, your football world championship the youth under 17 football world championship unfortunately india couldn't you know your host under 19 and the world club championship that would have been you know 
very wonderful but but you know these teams are these guys are you know bunch of highly energetic guys they move from one place to other you know say for example they'll be at times they'll be part of the league at times they'll be part of the soccer league at times they'll part of the you know, the badminton league because the essentials remain same of course there are sports sports related you know and sports specific your professionals also but other than that these people keep keep moving from one part of the country to other part one part of the world to the other part and keep keep doing their bit and you know you're organizing these championship and extremely energetic you know bunch of people extremely energetic i know at uh, in my previous company we were sponsoring world ocean race and manchester united so we saw that same energy and because there's no time you know as you said you you got to work 24 into 7 you got to work at you know or 10 pm 12 4 am look at you know look at your when you look at your 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 field of play how the arena looks like if it's ready for the next day's match one matches happen the next one starts so you have to again get things ready <laughs> it's, it's a very you know high up you know high energy high adrenaline and flow yeah it's really so debo uh, we are nearly out of time so i wanted to ask you for one last question you know uh, we both are in the same industry travel and hospitality and our industry is going through a very very tough time you know uh, hotels are shut car rentals are not doing that well lots of airlines are flying below capacity the risk factor is not very high and a lot of jobs are impacted so would you have a message of hope for everybody on the call on facebook uh, on how should they think about their career in travel and hospitality and a note of optimism from you no of course for travel and because of this pandemic one of the most hit industry is you know your your airline and hotels and the overall you know tdh travel transport and hospitality industry but you know in in every adversity i would say that there lies an opportunity and this is the period when you you know you can you can equip yourself with new skills you can learn a lot more you can acquire you know a lot of digital skills you can you can you can you this is the time to understand your customers and, and especially from and especially and especially for marketers this is the right time and right opportunity to you know understand customer behavior customer behavior this is the right term to a right time to understand your audience because you know the audience is you know thinking in thinking very differently at this point of time there are so you have to you have to you have to you know do a lot of a lot of research at this point of time understand your consumers and use your time well and uh, because you know beyond uh, i don't think we will ever see such kind of period in our lives again if we pass through this yeah i completely agree and uh, thank you for being a amazing amazing guest devo we all enjoyed the conversation uh, and i do look for a cup of coffee soon with you and sure, flying sure. together sure sure thank you and thank to you all our audience around the globe uh, you know we are signing off now but stay tuned in uh, the fire side chat is going to be back next week again with the exciting guest thank you and stay blessed thank you thanks